Ms. Speaker, you can start your talk now, ma'am. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Good morning. Time, the one you all have taken to attend this webinar. Thank you for your valuable time. One, which we are really short of. 24 hours, 1,440 minutes, 86,400 seconds are not enough at times with the task in hand. Alas, we fail at times to manage the time we have. Here we are for yet another session on time management. Hi, I'm Juhi and let's start our day. I hope my screen is visible to you all. thing that comes to your mind what is about time how do we manage our time and how our days goes like in the morning when we start our day fresh and everything you know on schedule how do we feel to accomplish everything that we have you know planned for the day how are we going to you know live it or maybe achieve the goal that we have set now when we say the goals that we have set do we differentiate between the urgent and the important ones do we understand that what time actually means and how we dedicate our time to one and all the tasks, maybe as a homemaker, maybe as an employee, maybe as an employer, maybe, you know, just as a mother of a baby? How do we allocate our time and how do we, you know, work accordingly? Do we feel towards the end of the day, oh God, I have been not able to, you know, survive this well. Oh God, I have been failing to survive this. How does it feel like? How does it go like? So here we are with our, you know, with my perspective on time management and what does it look like. When we talk about time, what is more important in, you know, keeping us all the way, you know, rise and shine is the motivation behind accomplishing a task. Why do I say that? When you achieve a task, when you complete a task or when you finish a task, how does it feel like? You feel energized, you feel motivated. And when you do so, you feel that the time is running fast and you are way above it. I hope this is making sense to you. Am I relatable to you? Now, let's, let me give you a talk on, you know, let's do something interested. I'm sure you guys have taken out time for me to listen and attend this webinar. Uh, just close your eyes for like five seconds. Are you with me? I hope so. And I'm sure you're doing a fantastic job. Let's all close our eyes like for five seconds. Let's see. I'm not measuring, I'm not seeing my clock as well. Five seconds according to you. Don't watch the time. Don't see your phone. So I'm sure you guys are done. Five seconds are over. How does it feel like? Are you sure that you have completed the task in five seconds or have you taken more? Let's do this again and close our eyes for like 10 seconds. And time's up. 10 seconds according to me is, is the same for you as well, is it? What happens? Time and the feeling of time that we have is different for all. The way we judge time for ourselves could be different. The way we have allocated time for, you know, closing our eyes, opening it is different for me, for you and for the world around us. Now what happens when we have a shorter duration we are very sure of finishing it on time like five seconds or ten seconds it makes sense because you can calculate you can measure that time but if the same time has been increased for like 30 seconds would you think that you would be doing exactly the same in like 30 seconds no you know why because it is very very difficult to sink in with the time in the mind that we have and with everyone around so what is best to allocate the time in hand in the best possible way and to make it more valuable. Why valuable? We say often say that time is money. 
why do we say that why money why do we compare time with money one because it is valuable and it is limited it is a resource that should be invested well and should be planned in a manner that you are able to accomplish all your goals when i say that time is money that means i am quantifying i am trying to quantify to give it more value to make it more you know emphasized to make it more important for your day to day plan the topic for the day also says time management one step at a time why do i say one step because you cannot multitask a lot of things together and you are not able to do justice with it one step at a time one task in hand finish it off give it your 100% and you are done when you have that feeling of being done that means you are moving towards one step higher in your career in your life in your achievements and that feeling of fulfillment give us the inner motivation the inner energizer to move on to go on and to have higher records in life for example time spent on making yourself you know upgrade into a particular field which is related to your job maybe to your demands maybe to your day to day life in upskilling in learning something new or maybe just asking about your feedback with your colleagues how does this help this help to make yourself more valuable to the organization that you're working in to the place that you belong to and when you take this kind of feedback this gives you and you know power a vision a way to work into a right direction now this kind of time when you evaluated or being used in a particular manner adds on to our growth and this growth makes you happy and give you the feeling of self actualization and self esteem to move forward in life now at times we often do relate procrastination to time management do you really think is it about this let's watch this you can see on my screen i have given a short puppet which says procrastination is the thief of time do we agree to this some may some may not but what is procrastination so it is the act of putting off intentionally the doing of something that should be done but as really matters is procrastination is related to time management or is it a problem a procrastinator is Okay, procrastination is completely the mental block or the emotional block what is it so procrastination is something that we do it intentionally and has absolutely nothing to do with the you know concept of time management and how you plan your time what is procrastination procrastination is generally about you know three stages procrastination in task procrastination in decision making procrastination in your life as in where you belong to now when i say task what is procrastination at task does it really mean that task in hand now and later how do we complete it is actually about the time management no absolutely not procrastination in task is when you have time you believe you have time and when you believe you have time you tend to go on delaying something in hand that is procrastination and task why because when you have a small task you feel like oh i can do it it is not such a big deal i can complete it not today but maybe tomorrow not tomorrow maybe day after and that goes on and on and on that's about procrastination and task and this has nothing to do with the concept of time management the minute the task in hand is really long or is really you know according to you you believe it is really really difficult you fail to measure and how to do it is actually the most painful thing in your mind you fail to organize your steps to organize and break down your task into smaller ones and that's how you keep and you tend to procrastinate that to overcome this problem what we need to do is to take smaller steps to reach to a bigger goal 
when these small steps are accomplished one after the other you feel that the task in hand is easy and is achievable that's the stage 1 about procrastination the stage 2 about procrastination is the decision making i would use a very important term over here which is decision paralysis have you heard of it let me tell you decision paralysis is the you know the mind when we are very very confused like at times i am not able to decide where to go what to do what kind of career should i choose am i happy with what i am doing or do i want more in life should my child go to this school which is the one i am working with or the one that is being near to me these are decisions and these decisions when we say procrastination of the decision stage is the one we again bring on over the time we have until and unless we have time we keep on delaying this matter for long till the last day has come and we then say that we have lost all the time we had the reason being we are delaying the decision the time that is involved in taking that decision and again with the decision we cannot do like stage 1 we cannot break down the decisions so what we do what i do i take the worst case scenario i judge myself I look at the pros and cons. I look at the things on hand. I look at five years down the lane. I feel what is comfortable. I measure. I evaluate. I analyze, and then I take a decision. The best way, and in time. So when you have all these measures in your hand, like a time matrix, I'm sure you are aware of. You can see what is urgent, what is important, what is to be done at the you know this time, and what can be delayed or is not important to you. right that's our stage number 2 and the third stage that relates to procrastination is all about where we are where we are is the most comfortable zone in our life mental and our mind and it's the zone that we always look for oh i'm comfortable comfortable doing this i'm very relaxed i'm peaceful all i want in my life is just the peace or is that the fear the fear of knowing the unknown the fear that if you have this and you lose this what is what about the next we don't know no one knows about it until and unless that decision has been done taken and we are living that decision no one knows that where we are is the best or the worst so procrastination is all about taking the right decision at the right time and time is being limited and valued so that should not be taken in hand with the concept of we have enough time or we should not believe in the concept that time is there so procrastination in short we can say is not a problem of time management is not a hindrance in time management but is a mental and emotional block let's watch this I'll have ten seconds, and we see that how can we have you know busting myths about procrastination, being aware and being non-judgmental, challenge and helpful beliefs, tolerate discomfort, getting out of your fear zones, reframe your excuses, find the real ones, take practical action, something that can lead to your goal and make you accomplish what you actually desire for, motivate and encourage yourself. And how do you motivate yourself? By accomplish shorter, you know, goals in hand, by achieving smaller goals, by achieving one step at a time, one task that actually make you happy and make you progress in life. and reflect and revise very very important to have your own feedback the ones you are doing correct and the ones that need a little more mending to go in the right direction procrastination is all about the mental now when i say time management time management strategies what is the first thing that i personally follow in my day to day life time boxing completing something within a fixed time frame adjusting your daily routine into a fixed blocks and you know making things accordingly planning your whole day time blocking you schedule you know how do we use google calendar mails calendars microsoft calendars and everything why do we do that so that we don't miss it we don't miss it we do it on routine we do it on purpose to make and accomplish everything in hand 
Pomodoro method. Have you heard of that before? It's a principle which says about the 80-20 rule. Like you put in less effort, but you achieve more. And why I say that more? Because it is related to the productivity. When you have a productive day, how accomplished you feel, how complete you feel and how happy you are. And that's how Pomodoro helps. It helps and says that according to this principle, if you give and invest 20% of your time and you achieve 80% of your work, that means more than 50% is done. And that feeling is the best feeling in the world, isn't it? The next one is eat the frog, though it sounds very weird, but that's how we say in the time management principle, identify and eat. Eat means complete your most important task each day without having that fear. Oh God, this would be tough and I won't be able to do it. Just go on and get it off with it. And once you are done, you're relaxed because rest of the task is in your hand. Next comes our Pareto principle. What is it? Have you heard? No idea? Let me tell you, you set out your task, you work for 20 and 25 minutes, like a fix, no distraction, no you know hindrance in between. You take a break, you relax and chill and go for a walk, stretch yourself and come back in it. How this helps, this you know, make you a quick comeback. You don't get bored, it doesn't feel monotonous and it energizes yourself internally that okay, you have done this, you have set a task, you have done and accomplished it, now it's time for another one. And that's how you complete your task in hand. Get the things done. That means all about the focus, no distractions, setting the limits and achieving those, you know, limits and, you know, achieving those problems, cross those limitations and make yourself a successful one. urgent and important one real life example that I would really like to quote for example being a part of this webinar and having conducting this webinar is urgent on my day task for today I haven't planned anything and this has been scheduled for like month so this is the most urgent task of my day and how do you differentiate between urgent and important if you have taken a time and if this webinar is adding value to you it is important so that's how you differentiate between urgent and important. In your day-to-day -day life, it is very, 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 very crucial for all of us to differentiate, prioritize, and organize your day in a manner that from urgent to important to less important falls one after the other. If you, you know, by chance not able to manage it, that's how the feeling of failure comes in. That, oh God, I have not been able to do this. In our day-to-day -day life, at times we fail and say, oh, I don't have time to go for a physical, you know, uh, well-being or I'm not able to go to jogging or gymming and everything. I have such a busy schedule. I have so much of, you know, long hours at work. I have a kid at home. I have a joint family, you know, dedication and, you know, work hours are difficult. But what if I prioritize and just have 10 minutes of it in my day-to-day -day life? What difference will it create in my life? is the most important thing that we look at when we talk about time and management. What value a task adds to you and to your own life is all about time management. Now, feeling happy and gala once we are done with all the you know techniques and once we have achieved our aim for the day, how does it feel like being more productive, being the energy to accomplish something new again. The feeling of stress is completely gone. You have more time to have luxury, maybe entertainment or go for a long drive and why not? Get more thing, you know, things done in a shorter span of time. Relate more positively to others because you feel complete. Feel better about yourself 
most important in today's world mental well being mental well being and the feeling that you are the best is what is required self appreciation is important be the rock star and i would definitely end by saying that ordinary people think of merely spending the time great people think of using it and using it for values and consideration if you love this please live it thank you so much thank you miss juhi it's a wonderful session i thoroughly enjoyed it personally and i have learned a lot uh, about time management i i'm sure like i'm going to implement uh, your input so we have a good number of people uh, you know who have uh, posted some questions here ma'am i'll read out those uh, to you are you ready yes please yeah so the first question goes like this what motivated you to get interested in this topic of time management uh i would say this is like a personal thing i really work out or plan my day the best way possible and i feel more productive and at the end of the day i feel all i have a lot of time personally to invest at home with my child as well because being a working mother at times you know you feel the guilt of you know not giving enough time to your own child and you know being involved in the work culture all the time so being in a planned manner i really achieve you know the accomplishment and being productive at work also results in better standards of you know work environment as well as gives you a rise in your you know being as a employed person so that's a personal take that i feel that time is the most valuable and the most limited resource of all right so the question goes like this do you think schools manage the time of teachers and students well see there are two perspectives to it because uh, teachers and students are two different you know communities when schools talk about you know the students they plan according to the uh, you know the hours they have and since the in today's world we have been uh, you know around various activities not only the education is uh, you know at par important but the co cultural activities you know being physically involved in a number of things or maybe artistically involved in a number of you know creative classes and everything is actually important for a child for the you know holistic growth so schools yes a lot a lot of planning in this that how the children should be able to manage their education the curriculum which is in hand as well as their holistic development and they give enough time for example nowadays you must have seen that schools have made uh, specific days for different subjects in terms of homeworks they don't pile up these students with all the homework in a day and they give us only a homework which should takes out your time for like 20 minutes that's a very good good uh, you know practice that's how schools are you know managing it also you know as compared to the past we have been you know going to school for the last 20 years by saying that saturdays are also working but in the schools in the today's days have actually given a saturday off what is it it is just to manage the time and give you know students the opportunity to manage their time in their hand not controlling by the schools itself as far as uh, teachers are concerned at times yes we feel that we are being overburdened with the kind of work in hand but you know personally being a teacher i would say that if you manage again your time well you will be able to do justice with 24 hours right so at what age do you think we should start teaching children about the time management oh uh, i would say there is no such age once the students are actually going to the school and i would say the uh, you know primary itself even maybe the first class the primary classes from where they have a proper schedule to follow when we say something that is scheduled it's about time when they follow that schedule they are managing their time when they are finishing off their homework when they are back home they are again managing the time so time management can be start as early as possible to incorporate the best of you know decision making in them and those decisions gives you a long way in your you know personal growth as well so as early i would suggest okay there is no age limit kind of right? of course because once you you know the children are going to school they know how they are managing their time they're sleeping on time they are getting up on time they are going to school following a schedule going for lunch in a proper time going coming back to school or oh, sorry back to home and working and finishing off their task in hand is also time so managing right. times comes naturally yes 
in your observation why are some people better at time management than others again i would go back to my uh, you know presentation and session where i use the word procrastination it's not about better we all are doing a great job in our life there is no one who is not actually trying to manage the time it's all about the mental block that we have when we feel that we have enough time to finish off something we feel that we can delay this and that feeling of delay actually leads to poor management not that we are not good time planners or not we are you know doing good at our task it's just the feeling of that we have time delays the work in hand nothing else and i think uh, you know the practice also practice also makes you perfect right the absolutely. saying is always yeah, yeah. absolutely and that's how you need to you know practice or you know when you and live plan your life yes you plan it you start your day with your plans and you accomplish them and once you start accomplish them on a daily basis you feel that you have more energy to invest in something that you actually desire for other than work right so please tell us about your education career background okay uh, i belong to uh, up uttar pradesh and uh, i have finished my post graduation from delhi university i have been assistant professor in delhi university lady of an college for like 3 years i was uh, the assistant professor for uh, resource management and design application taught post graduate students help them into you know preparing their thesis and everything and then i wanted to explore the real world of ib curriculum which is the you know international baccalaureate in terms of school teaching the field is uh, you know exponentially creative open minded and is a va- has vast opportunities for children to learn in a different perspective altogether it is not restrictive it is uh, you know open ended so there is a lot of sc- uh, you know scope for students to explore the variety of subjects that they have in hand and the choice is all theirs so they have different languages they have different subjects they have different combinations and that helps the student to make their own decision according to the strength they have and manage their own time where they need the best currently i am working with an international school which is pathways world school and it's been the fifth year of working with them as i took a break in between because of the motherhood journey and that's about myself also i am a graphic designer at my creative front the video that you have just saw has been created and made by me i'm a creative person i keep on you know doing different creative stuff into mandala into you know different things uh, that i love to do for example i would like to show you my recent work wow she is here i can see yes. right so i made this wow so i when i have time and i manage my time well i invest in creativity that's actually being peaceful nice to know so what can school management do to help teachers manage their time better maybe dividing uh, or uh, creating a block like at times we as teachers have to indulge into various co curricular activities along with the curriculum that we have to follow and finish up in time because of the education system standards and you know different exam status and i think proper allocation of the co curricular as well as the curriculum design planning should be such that things can balance out together and one has to look forward to the you know work life balance work at life work at home should be balanced and taken care of the time dedicated in school or at workplace should be restricted to the same and should not be considered that being at home means the employer employee is always being employed so schools at par can actually take a decision and make the workload in a manner that the task given to them should be completed within the school hours that should be the best thing i would say right so there is another interesting one here somebody wants to know for some people time management can be a tremendous source of stress your comments on this i don't think so but that's how i personally feel because i am able to manage my time well but uh, stress i think is a very uh, you know difficult term to put on time time we all have equally you know given to us 24 hours and it is all about planning it well organizing your thoughts well and prioritizing if you know about ergonomics i hope i don't know ergonomics is actually designing a space in a manner which is actually used according to the priority or importance so when we talk about ergonomics and design like sitting on a chair and how ergonomically designed that chair is that means it should be comfortable when you sit on it 
your back should be in a position that your you know the chair back is supportive and your legs should be in a position of rest that's an ergonomic design where your body should actually align with the furniture now when i say ergonomics and kitchen designing in your workplace how do you arrange your normal sugar and spices the one they are comfortable with the one where your hand reaches the one the height matches according to your height and that differs for everyone right your kitchen design could be different from my kitchen design and my arrangement is that stressful no it's about planning when i know that sugar and spices or the oils are the main ingredients that are used in everything almost everything throughout the day i would arrange them in the first order and the things that are being less used let's say some spices like the um, in hindi if i would say the khada masala and everything that you don't use on a day to day basis or some spices like oregano or chili flakes you don't add upon in every you know cuisines of yours you put them a little back what is this this is just arranging your space in a manner that it is convenient to you when you are using it so is about your time the way you organize the most important the urgent ones should be accomplished in a day to day life before the ones that you feel is a little less important that's how you arrange it and once you are in a habit of accomplishing something like this you won't feel stressed at all right it's Not all about the planning and organizing and differentiating between what is what is important urgent, what is urgent, urgent important. everything absolutely yes. and it's all about mindset yes last but not the least ma'am uh, uh, it's uh, connected to the previous question itself uh, isn't it more important to reduce the number of tasks you take on instead of getting stressed about time being wasted uh see it is again the time we have in hand and like i said about the pomodoro rule which is 20% and 80% like if you have so many tasks in hand and you can differentiate differentiate the one which is very important urgent or the one you feel is going to take you a lot of time or is more you know creating a stress in your life maybe difficult to achieve or maybe has enough components to achieve on one go choose the one that can be easily done and feel accomplished that way you will have a feeling that by applying only 20% or little of effort you are achieving something that is giving you result as much as 80% so that feeling itself give you a productivity factor and makes you feel accomplished in the task in hand the later task you can do is like the other strategy that i used was eating the frog if you feel that some task is difficult why don't you finish it off first you give more effort in the morning finish up the difficult one in hand and the rest can be done easily because you know that just 20% of the effort and you can achieve the 100% of your day plan so again you can choose either of the two principle to you know accomplish the goal in hand so i have read out all the questions and uh, school journal of education and school reform dot com thank you for the talk and for patiently answering all the questions ma'am we also I thank the audience i was able to justice with everyone and I, oh, it was interesting to you know being and giving you your valuable time is what we are talking about <laughs> now the audience the i'm sure like uh, they have got all those uh, answers and we also thank the audience for participating in the event and we'll end the session now ma'am thank you thank you so much it was wonderful